sounded like a giggles round of applause. <laughs>
this girl I'm with, she's on E, and she's like, you gotta make sure I drink enough water, because I could die. I was like, I don't even want to be the designated driver. <laughs> now I'm the paramedic for the evening. <laughs> now I'm thinking, what happens if she does die? That's an awkward conversation with her parents. Like, I'm sorry about your daughter. I told her I'd make sure she drank enough water, but I totally spaced. <laughs> Coordinates the permanent press. Three of the engines are 
stalling. Get me some quarters. <laughs> and another drink. This place is starting to look like a laundromat. A lot of sports analogies with drinking, like pre-game and party final. I like to make them my own. The other day I was like, oh, I pulled a hamstring. My friend was like, what does that mean? I was like, oh, you threw up on your couch. <laughs> and then I did it again, and I was like, 30 love. <laughs> Score touchdowns and then they start dancing afterwards. It seems so self-congratulatory. Like now that I have everyone's attention, here's a few other skills I've been working on. <laughs> I feel like you're gonna do that. At least do something interesting. Like Emma Smith has crossed the goal line and is painting a Fabergé egg. <laughs> nice to be here in Seattle. I like this somehow, and I like how you guys have pastel windows. I think that's a really nice quality. I, I, uh, I'm staying at the Best Western, and my career is going pretty fucking well. And, uh, <laughs> I remember when I was starting out and I used to just stay at the Western. <laughs> and things picked up and they put me in the better Western. I hope to someday stay in the bestest Western. <laughs> I think that your homeless people need to take it down a fucking notch. <laughs> I was in the street today, and this woman was like, hey, give me a dollar. And uh, I was like, I don't have a dollar. And uh, I was holding an apple and a, and, a, and a banana. And I said, you want one of these? Chill. <laughs> That's a cocky fucking homeless person. <laughs> Anti-apples. <laughs> Flew in Delta, and they were like, "Thank you for choosing Delta, as though I'm a discriminating customer at all." If it were three dollars cheaper, I would have flown on a kite. <laughs> They'd be like, "Thank you for choosing a kite," and I'd be like, "Thank you, kite attendant." <laughs> I read your profile on the flights. I feel bad, but I do. I flew with my friend who's Middle Eastern. He's my friend, and I was like, keep where I can see him, Omar. <laughs> <laughs> and his name is Nick. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like taking the train, but I was on Amtrak the other day, and they were like, thank you for choosing Amtrak. I don't know if you noticed, there's not a lot of other trains out there on the tracks. <laughs> it was either Amtrak or one of these. <laughs> It's like the sun saying the moon is 
so bright. <laughs> You're loud, 
for being so far away. I like Jay-Z. Jay-Z's so good at rapping, he doesn't have to rhyme in his songs anymore. He just ends all the lines with ism. He'll be like, I went down the street and I saw my sizzle. Was it to my nother and my brother and my gizzle? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure none of those are words. <laughs> I am playing Scrabble with Jay-Z. <laughs> The word is Drizza, D-R-I-Z-Z-A-H, triple word. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to challenge that one again. I'm going to consult my diction, is it? First of all, it's not a word. Second of all, one of your Z's is a sideways end. about Dr. Dre, and he's not a doctor, like, at all. <laughs> like, not even a little bit. If I woke up from surgery and I saw Dr. Dre, I'd be pretty pissed. I'd be like, how bad is my insurance? I got a rapper doctor? He's, like, smoking pot, Snoop Dogg's in the corner with a video camera, spraying IV fluid on nurses and bikinis. I like that Nelly song, Cotton Here. That song is like an infomercial for taking your clothes off. It's like, come on down, it's so hot, you're going to want to take your clothes off. And they have testimonials like, I am getting so hot, I'm going to take my clothes off. <laughs> and they have callers ordering stuff. Can I get a little, uh, uh, and a little bit of, uh, uh. I like that Missy Elliott song, Work It. That song seems kind of dirty, though. I'm not sure, but I think she's talking about penises in that song. I'm not going to have sex with Missy Elliott because my penis is not flippable or reversible. I don't care how much she shaves her cha-cha.
I was never the class clown in school. The class clown is always a mean guy. He walks in a room, he's like, you're fat, you're gay, I'm out of here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole key to be a bully, his nickname. That's why some people suck at being bullies. They'll walk in and be like, what's up, big head? And everyone's like, that guy's head isn't that big. You know? <laughs> Another guy walks in like, what's up, peanut butter wrap? And everyone's like, it's true, it's true. <laughs> you give me. <laughs> Where are you going? Everybody's spinning around. Everybody's taking, everybody's taking a fucking break in the middle of the show. Where's my break, bitch? Where's my break? This is officially a lull when people start walking out in the middle of the show. Sometimes when I do jokes and they don't get a lot of laughter, it kind of feels like I'm performing jazz. Because the audience is just like... <laughs> I'm like, that's kind of cool, because jazz is cool, but then I'm like, wait a minute, sometimes jazz sucks. Maybe I'm the Kenny G of comedy. <laughs> Maybe I think I sound like this, like... And in fact, I sound like this... Thank <laughs> you. 
human porn and I were a panda bear, I'd be like, yeah, I'll have sex with her, but I'm still not going to have sex with her. And if it's panda porn, how do they get those pandas to have sex with each other in the movie? Let's get that director on board for our project and that lead stunt panda actor, the John Holmes of pandas. He's like, I do all the pandas. to 140 times a day. That's got to be hard to have a serious conversation. <laughs> They're like, honey, we need to talk. Oh, my God. Go behind a tree or something. I know we're bears, but come on. Oh, there goes me. Sorry about that. I like watching uh, nature documentaries. I just feel bad for the animals, because I always feel like I know more shit than they do. Like, I feel like I'm at a bank heist, and I'm the guy in the van watching on the monitors, and they're like, the Arctic fox has only one known predator, the polar bear. And I'm like, Arctic fox, it's a setup. Get out of there. Uh, yeah, polar bear is my favorite animal because they're just so laid back, you know, because they don't have any predators. They're like, shit's going great, you know? <laughs> like once in a while, like a wolf comes along and it's like, what's up, what's up? And they're just like, look, uh, I'm nine feet tall and uh, unless you stop doing that, I'm going to rip your body apart like it was a pillow. And again, I'm nine feet tall. <laughs> I, uh, I'm doing this Carson Daly show again on Monday. Does anybody ever watch that? It's on like 2 in the morning. And it's, like, <laughs> it's like an uncomfortable time in the evening that it's on. It's like 2 in the morning. It's like, it's a, uh, last call with Carson Daly is always like a healthy reminder that uh, I shouldn't be awake. I'm like, uh, oh, wow. I should have go to sleep like four hours ago. <laughs> this is a problem. And uh, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like the opposite of a wake up call. It's like a sleep up call. <laughs> I'm gonna say that on the show one, but we just know. Things go as well as I hope. <laughs> It's also because it's like the most pathetic celebrities on the show. I'm on the show on Monday with Danny Aiello's band. <laughs> Danny Aiello's band? And you know what he's thinking? I'm on with Mike Perbiglia. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm like, the, I'm like the least famous person who's ever on television, you know? People recognize me in the street sometimes and they think they should win a prize. They're like, you're Mike Perfiglia. Give me a fucking dollar. <laughs> <laughs> you owe me, bitch. <laughs> I don't know. Did people come on a date here? Did anybody come on a date? <laughs> no? Round of applause or whatever? Did you? Yeah? How many dates is that? <laughs> we don't need hand signals. How many? Two? That's good. How's it going so far? Hope it works. Work. How do you think it's going? <laughs> <laughs> I am single right now. I realize what I need to find is a woman who loves me for my money, but doesn't understand math. <laughs> Middle of the day, she goes, you know what 
turns me on, and I said, what? And she said, black guys. Uh, which I found really discouraging, you know, because I've been mistaken for a lot of things in my life, but I've never had anyone be like, you're black, right? <laughs> I used to think I was a little bit unstable, and then I met every girl I've ever dated. Uh, they kind of keep on a rock for a while, everything seems cool. Then about two months in, they're like, maybe this weekend we could, I'm crazy! <laughs> my female friends complain about dating, my girl was like, I went out with this guy, he wanted to sleep with me after five dates. And I was like, no. He wanted to sleep with you after one day. He thought he might have a chance after five. He probably wanted to sleep with you after zero days, but he thought a trip to Applebee's might grease the wheels a little. I've always been kind of afraid of sex. Like, when I was like, in high school, I didn't even know how sex could occur. People told me they had sex. I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. How did that happen? You know, like, <laughs> and like, uh, so the first girl I went out with in high school, she was very aggressive. And we were making out for the first time. And she whispered in my ear, rape me. And uh, which I thought was a really tall order. Because uh, I hadn't even had sex regular. I wasn't really ready for the ropes course. <laughs> I was thinking that if I had done that, it would have been the lightest rape of her life. <laughs> I'd have to disclaim it. I'd be like, I'm letting you off easy this time. <laughs> I was living with a girl for a while, and we worried about different things. One day I was like, what do you fear the most? And she was like, I fear you'll meet someone else, and you'll leave me, and I'll be all alone. And she's like, what do you fear the most? And I was like, bears. <laughs> Two cats, you know, and I think the cats were gay. They were always licking each other and spooning in the window and criticizing the way I dress. I don't think it's a biological thing, like they're gay by birth. I think it's an environment thing, like they're prison gay. Like they don't see any female cats ever. And after a while, it's just like, look, Tony. <laughs> you got to take Tony, your cat, to the vet because he had a urinary tract infection. So I took him in. They gave me this questionnaire about the cat, but I didn't know any of the answers. It wasn't my cat. I only had two right. I got cat and I got male. It said breed, and I wrote question mark gay. <laughs> Mike killed the baby. 
Mike's not getting anything. And uh, if I ever want to like adopt a baby, I'll go in and they'll be like, have you ever killed a baby? And I'll be like, yeah, one. <laughs> one baby. Is that all right? <laughs> It's talking about killing babies. He came to the wrong show. <laughs> so I moved into a new apartment, and uh, I have this habit of making awkward situations more awkward. I live in New York City. I'm moving my bed in, and this woman who lived in the building opened the front door of the building with her key, and she said, "I'm not worried because a rapist wouldn't have a bed like that." <laughs> Now, what I should have said was nothing. <laughs> what I did say was you'd be surprised. <laughs> now, there's not much you can say after that. It just uh, sits there. But, uh, yeah, so I moved into this little apartment. It's like, uh, you know in, like, prison movies, when they put the guys in the hole? That's, like, my apartment. Uh, except it's not as, uh, it's more offensive, because it's, like, it's, like, for big league, get in the hole, and they're, like, can I have, like, $1,200 a month? Is that all right? That's how much it is. I, uh, I saw a mouse in my apartment the other day. I have a really small apartment. I was like, where are you going to sleep? <laughs> so I went to the store and, and bought a, a glue trap. And I feel, I, I have ethical reservations about glue traps. I think that's got to be in the Bible, like glue into others or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> I shall not glue shit to other living shit or uh, something. Something is in there, and because uh, it's crazy what they do. But I had the mouse, and so I get it. And my it, my worst nightmare. I put it down, and immediately the mouse runs out from the wall and onto the trap, and it's like. Ah! free the mouse from the thing. I get like a mop, and I'm like pushing it away from the thing, and uh, trying to like run away, mouse. And, uh, and even if that worked, I knew that that's not a good story either for the mouse. It's like he's got like one leg, and he's got glue all over his back. It's like that uncle with war scars. You know, it's like Uncle Glue Trap. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, so I, and so I got to put it out of its misery. I don't know what to do. I, I don't believe in guns, so I didn't do that. But uh, so I just put it. I put it in the toilet to drown it, and because uh, I felt so bad, because there's nothing I could do, so I put it in the thing. But what happened is it kept floating to the top, and uh, so I was like pushing it down and like floating up and pushing it down. Now I'm making it do fucking bobs, you know, and it's like the most like morbid swimming class at the Y ever, you know. And, and so I finally take a bottle of Clorox and I put it on top, I put it on top to weigh it down. It's the heaviest thing I had, and uh, and so it works, it dies, and then uh, and then I try and take out the bottle of Clorox, but it's stuck to the blue chat. And uh, <laughs> And so I take the whole thing out as a group. It's like this sort of mongrelized modern art, like Clorox mouse glue trap piece. You know, and it's like I'm trying to think of titles, like our mouse-like struggle to escape from the glue traps of society uh, that is infested with chemicals. And uh, so I take the whole fucking thing and uh, I just kind of like toss it in the garbage, and uh, so that wasn't a good thing, but that's the end of the story, and the reason I, I brought you through that whole uh, detailed story is that if we ever find Osama bin Laden, <laughs> I got a great fucking idea, you know? I got some plans.
TV. It was like stealing music off the internet is like stealing a candy bar from the store. That really got me thinking, if I could steal candy bars off the internet, I would be on a fucking Twixter all day. So I went to visit my parents in Massachusetts. And anyone from Massachusetts? I have a theory about Massachusetts that like a silent majority of the people who live there are um, retarded. <laughs> in a moment, I ran to the car and I was walking out of the place. And this is the conversation I had with the guy. He goes, he goes, happy skiing. I was like, oh, thanks. He goes, you know what I'm talking about? I was like, because it's snowing? He was like, yeah. <laughs> That's a retarded conversation. <laughs> so when I went to visit my parents, whenever I go home, my dad always tries to get me to fix his computer. He's like, you're so good at computers. You should be a computer programmer. I'm like, you're so bad at computers. You should be a caveman. <laughs> I had my mom fax me something recently, and she called me up and said, Hey, Mike, could you fax that back? That's my only copy. <laughs> <laughs> that actually happened, and I'm not sure how she thought the machine worked, like whether the paper goes through the air, <laughs> or whether it's like the drive through at the bank, and it goes through that shoot. <laughs> I was always a little afraid of my dad growing up. More than that, I was always afraid of my friend's dad. Because your dad starts going off, you know what he's capable of. Your friend's dad starts going off, you're like, this guy's a wild card. <laughs> <laughs> he just kicked the dog. What do you think he's going to do to all <laughs> I remember the first time I saw my friend get hit by his dad. I couldn't believe it. I was like, tough break for Sean. <laughs> And 15 minutes later, when Sean was beating the crap out of me, I was like, I gotta team up with Sean's dad. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I went to arts camp. We learned how to play an instrument called the recorder. So not only were we losers, but we had a warning signal. <laughs> I, uh, so I went home to visit my parents, and I'll, I'll show you this to end. Is, uh, I, I, w I always go through like cards that I made as a kid when I go home. Because like, when you're a kid, you send cards for everything. It's like Valentine's Day, everybody gets a Valentine's. It's like, two Tim, nice pants, love Scott. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is a card. These are actual cards. The card I sent my parents for Valentine's Day when I was a kid. It's a, it's a heart there. It's got heart eyes and heart feet and three hearts in the middle where the heart goes. <laughs> Darwin wasn't very good with this bear. He's got, a, he's got a bullseye heart right in the middle. Just open it up and I, it says, Dear Mom and Dad, I hope you're having a nice Valentine's Day and I want you to double my allowance and give me five dollars every day. <laughs> and then I drew the dollars just in case I didn't know what dollars looked like. <laughs> I like the logic of this card. It's like, here's a cute little bear. Bam, invoice. How about a little cash, Mom and Dad? On the top left, I made some kind of error, and so I drew this uh, weird, like, black, squiggly alligator thing. <laughs> and in the back, I wrote, Love might be, remember that allowance. <laughs> So it's like writing with a Boston accent. <laughs> you, 
in case you guys didn't hear her, she goes, Renan? <laughs> that I sent my mom for New Year's, because we all sent cards out for the New Year's. And uh, this is a trick, though. It's to my mom from my dad. So it says, have a happy New Year. Dear Mary Jean, this is Vince Perbiglia. This is your husband. <laughs> Goodbye, 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 goodbye. <laughs> Which is really like a serial killer approach to that, right? Like, goodbye, 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 goodbye. <laughs> this is the last one. I drew a picture. I, I, I sent a, a card to my sister Gina when I was a kid. And uh, I drew a picture of Gina on the cover. <laughs> just in case you didn't know what she looked like. Uh, in case you guys don't know what she looked like, she has uh, 45 teeth. <laughs> and a rare condition where her nostrils are just below her nose. <laughs> and she's always holding a pen that says Gina. This is a poem book, a song book, and a joke book. The poem is called, A Bear is in My Chair. <laughs> Clearly I have some kind of freaky bear issues running through my life. <laughs> oh, a bear. A bear is in my chair. Except I forgot to write chair, so I needed to use a carrot. <laughs> Even though it's the fucking title. <laughs> Home isn't called the bears in mine. <laughs> bears in my chair, and I gave him a chair of honey. <laughs> A common measurement for honey. <laughs> and sent him away, and the next day he was back again and didn't know what to say. So it really comes full circle there at the end. <laughs> where the bear returns and is speechless. <laughs> okay, ready? Joke book. First joke I ever wrote. What has two hands? Two feet. Answer, Gina. <laughs> I like <laughs> this is the first song I ever wrote. It's called Country Song. C-O-N-C-H-R-Y, which is how most country singers spell it anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna try and sing the country song in the best country style I know how. So if you could just give me like a light clap, like a country clap, like a dance maybe. Right? I think that's a triangle or anything.
And, uh, and by the way, I do appreciate it. It's nice that everybody except you came. And, uh, <laughs>
for choosing Amtrak. I don't know if you've been out there. There's not a lot of other trains out there in the tracks. It's either Amtrak or one of these. Like, I don't have one of those, Amtrak. I don't know if you have a rental. I went to Los Angeles and I rented a car. I'm not into like cars for status, but if you are, I don't recommend the Toyota Echo. Uh, I don't know like a lot of our cars, but I don't think that one has an engine and everything. And I open up the hood and I go, where's the engine? And it goes, where's the engine? Where's the engine? And it's, uh, it's an Echo. And uh, 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 I get this car and there's no license plate on the car. I said to the guy, like, isn't this going to be a problem? And he goes, no, the cops are real cool around here. I swear to God, the cops are real cool around here. I had heard that about those L.A. cops. Like, they're really laid back. And... So I'm driving around Los Angeles. I live on a uh, toll road by mistake, and I didn't have any change when I showed up at the basket. I didn't know what to do, so I wrote him a little note. And I, like, I was like, I'm really sorry. I'll totally get you back. And then I put the note in the basket, and I drove through, and it didn't register the note. It was like, wah, wah, wah. And my car was like, wah, wah, wah. And, go. and uh, then it took a, a picture of my car, and I was like, oh, great. And then I realized, I don't have a license plate. So there's a big fucking winner now, Los Angeles. Told me he was gay this week, but I knew he was gay, so it was kind of awkward. He's like, I'm gay, and I was like, Yeah, I know. And he's like, but I'm in the closet. I was like, Yeah, but on the closet, there's a poster of Benicio del Toro. <laughs> I'm a little gay, you know? I think I like Tom Cruise a little too much. Like, I wouldn't have sex with him, but if my girlfriend came home and said that she had sex with him, I'd be like, Details. <laughs> A lot of times, like, gay friends will kind of assign gayness to other people at random and be like, oh, I'm getting a real gay vibe from him. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that vibe is just reverberating off of you. <laughs> it's like the sun saying, the moon is so bright. <laughs> I'm single. I realize what I need to find is a woman who loves me for my money, but doesn't understand math. <laughs> I don't know, this girl, middle of the day, she goes, you know what turns me on? And I said, what? And she said, black guys. And uh, I find that really discouraging, because I've been mistaken for a lot of things in my life. But I've never had anyone be like, you're black, right? <laughs> I don't know this girl, she wasn't too bright. She wasn't like book smart. She was like magazine smart or uh, butter label smart. I used to think I was a little bit unstable and then I met every girl I've ever dated and uh, they kind of keep it under wraps for a while. Everything seems cool. And then about two months in they're like, maybe this weekend we could. I don't know, I'm kind of afraid of sex. I, I was in high school, I, did, I couldn't even believe that sex existed, like it could occur. People would be like, I had sex, I'd be like, you did what? You know, like, uh, I remember the first girl I went out with was really aggressive, and we were making out for the first time, and she whispered in my ear, rape me. And uh, I, that was a tall order, you know, because I hadn't even had sex regular. Uh, I really wasn't ready for the ropes course, you know, and I was thinking that if I had actually done that, uh, it would have been the lightest rape of her life, you know, I'd have to disclaim it, like, I'm letting you off easy this time. Yeah. <laughs> Female friends complaining about dating my friends, like, I went out with this guy, he wanted to sleep with me after five dates, and I was like, no. He wanted to sleep with you after one day. He thought he might have a chance after five. He probably wanted to sleep.
sleep in the after zero days, but he thought a trip to Applebee's might grease the wheels. <laughs> less in the workplace than men, which I think is fine, because if we didn't make 30% more, you guys would all marry each other. <laughs> that 30% is all we have. They don't make that away from us. Oh, leverage. <laughs> I was living with a girl for a while, and we worried about different things. One day I was like, what do you fear the most? She was like, I fear you'll meet someone else and you'll leave me and I'll be all alone. She was like, what do you fear the most? And I was like, bears. <laughs> I was two cats. And I think that cats were gay. Because they were always licking each other and spooning in the window and criticizing the way I dress. I don't think it's a biological thing, like they're gay by birth. I think it's an environment thing. Like they're prison gay, like they don't see any female cats ever, and after a while it's just like, look, Tony. <laughs> we ain't getting any younger, buddy. This might be catnip talking, but I like the way your belly matches your paws. <laughs> That's a true story. One day my girlfriend called me from work and she's like, you got to take Tony or Cat to the vet because he had a urinary tract infection. So I took him in. They gave me this questionnaire about a cat, but I didn't know any of the answers because it wasn't my cat. You know, I only got two right. I, uh, I, got, I got cat and I got male. It said breed, and I wrote question mark gay. <laughs> it said describe the reason you are here today, and I wrote my girlfriend is at work. <laughs> And if my cats ever looked up at me and told me how dumb I was and how their food sucks, I'd be like, well, Tony, we're putting you to sleep. <laughs> That's all we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lizzie, we lived together. And she wanted to have a, a kid, and so we broke up. And I just decided that I'm not going to have kids until I'm sure that nothing else good can happen in my life. <laughs> My sister's having a baby next month, and I'm like a little nervous because I'm kind of afraid of babies. Like, what happens if you're holding the baby and then the baby dies? You know, and everyone's like, Mike killed the baby. You know, like, there's no way I'm getting a Christmas present after that. And it's like, I was like, should we get him the Amazon gift card? Mike killed the baby. <laughs> Mike's not getting anything. You know, and, uh, if, and then if I ever want to adopt a baby. They'll be like, have you ever killed a baby? And I'll be like, I'll be like yeah, one. It was one, and it was a total accident. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Put your head down in shame, you cell phone whore. I just got a really good cordless phone, but I got a great plan. I got unlimited roaming within a 45-foot radius, and uh, I can't afford a Palm Pilot. I just got one of those little Etch-a-Sketches, and uh, it doesn't, doesn't keep addresses, but man, can I draw stairs. <laughs> I'm trying to stay fit. I got a little card on the subway that says lose 10 to 400 pounds. I'm pretty sure I don't want to lose the whole 400 because then I'd weigh negative 235 pounds. That seems like sort of a dangerous way. I make deals with myself. I'm like, I can eat this cheeseburger, but then later I'm going to go to the gym. But then instead of going to the gym, I eat a cake. <laughs> I'm like, the deal is off. <laughs> My weakness is sugar cereal. Like, if I buy a box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch at 3 in the afternoon, that shit ain't making it to 10 a.m. <laughs> 
It's like crack, you know what I mean? You don't buy crack for some point in the future. You buy crack when you want crack, and then you fall asleep in the tub. And that's how it happens. That's how it goes down. You do. And every time you go, I'm dieting, I was like, what are you talking about? You don't need to diet that much. And uh, it's true, I'm the kind of guy who has a weight problem, but I'm the kind of guy who could really put the brakes on an orgy. You know, everyone would be like, was he invited? Why is he eating a cake? I've never been in an orgy. I feel like it'd be like what happens when I try and play pickup basketball. Like, no one passes me the ball. Everyone asks me to keep my shirt on. I try and go to the gym. The idea is to impress women, but it seems counterproductive because there are women at the gym and they can see me bench pressing 65 pounds. And I don't think they're saying, check out the guy in the dress socks. I saw him do one chin up and then fall on the ground. <laughs> I went to a dance club the other day, which was timely because my self-esteem had been hovering around normal and I've been meaning to knock it down to negative a thousand. <laughs> Everyone tries to get you to dance at the club, especially women, they're like, you gotta dance, you gotta dance, and then I dance and they're like, not like that. <laughs> assortment of people at these clubs, there's like sketchy guys hitting on women, but then there's like these club kids with like glow sticks and knee pads, and they're licking the walls, doing cartwheels, and there's like five guys like me in the corner looking at each other like, I don't even know how I got here. Do you have any extra knee pads? This girl offered me E at the club. She's like, have you ever done E? And I was like, I, I watch E. <laughs> She's like, you gotta do E, it helps you feel the music. I was like, I don't even like this music. <laughs> I don't really want to take the next step. <laughs> I'm not against enhancing certain experiences. Like if someone were like, you gotta try this drug, it helps you feel the pizza. You know, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'll try that drug. Oh man, I can feel the sauce in my toes. Uh, yeah, it's nice, you know. This girl I'm with, she's on E, and she's like, you gotta make sure I drink enough water, because I could die. I was like, I don't even want to be the designated driver. Now I'm the paramedic for the evening? I'm thinking, what happens if she does die? That's an awkward conversation with her parents. Like, oh, I'm sorry about your daughter. I told her I'd make sure she drank enough water, but I totally spaced. And, uh, then I show up at the funeral. What do I say about her? I don't know anything about her. I'm like, she loved E. She hated water. funeral and they hand out Kleenex at the beginning of the funeral, which I thought was cocky. You know, like, wait till you get a load of this funeral. You're gonna cry and cry, she's so dead, and uh, it... Someone's cell phone up at the funeral. And uh, they took the call. If you take a cell phone out of a funeral, you gotta have like a really good excuse, like it's the guy who just died. And he's calling from the coffin, and he's trying to get out. <laughs> I made a mistake. I bought two sympathy cards uh, by mistake, and so now I have an extra. And I'm not saying I'm rooting for my friends to die, but if they do, I'm ready, you know? And uh, I think a sympathy card is kind of offensive in a way. It's kind of like, I know you're going through the deepest sorrow of your entire life, Here's a mimeograph of a daffodil. Hope that works out for you, you know, and uh... I'd like to make my own sympathy card, like on the cover, have like a picture of like a duck-billed platypus playing checkers with like a pear, you know, and like a Dracula brushing his teeth, you know, and then you open it up and it says the world is fucked up. <laughs>
remember someone passes away, and we say they're in a better place. Sometimes you get worried, like, what if heaven's not a better place? What if it's just a similar place? What if it's just like a Wendy's in Ohio? You show up, you're all confused. You're like, Grandpa, what are you doing here? He's like, this is heaven. You're like, this can't be heaven. And he's like, have you tried the Frosty? And it all starts to make sense. You're like, of course hamburgers should be square. <laughs> That way you get four bonus bites with no buns. <laughs> I always get worried to get to heaven and God's too nice. So the kind of guy who's so nice it's kind of annoying, you know? He's like, hey, you want a back rub? Let's go play tennis, you know? And you're like, well, you get it, God. <laughs> or like, really nice but way out of touch. Like, who wants some figs and honey, you know? <laughs> I think hell's just gonna be like waiting in line at the post office. There's like 13 windows, but only two are open on that day. And Satan's the guy behind you who smells like peanut butter, and he's humming the Golden Girls theme. And every once in a while, he's like, "You think you'll have more people working?" And you're like, "Thanks, Blanche." <laughs> So I live in New York City. I think the motto for New York should be, I didn't need that part of my car anyway. <laughs> Someone stole my blinkers off my car. That's like the gang member who misunderstood the assignment, you know? Like, all the other guys got hubcaps, stereos. This guy's like, yo, I got front blinkers, you know? And they're like, you might not be gang material. <laughs> What else do you get? I got a little cap on the air for the tires. I got a mixtape, you know? <laughs> I moved into a new apartment recently. I have this habit of making awkward situations even more awkward. I was moving my bed in, and this woman who lived in the building opened the front door with her key, and she said, I'm not worried because a rapist wouldn't have a bed like that. <laughs> now, what I should have said was nothing. <laughs> what I did say was you'd be surprised. And that's, and that's where it went awry. You know, that's really where it went away from goodness. But, uh... I moved, in, I, have a, I moved into this little teeny apartment. I, uh, it's like, I, how do I describe it? It's like in prison movies uh, when they're like, get in the hole. Like, that's my apartment, you know? It's like the hole, you know? And uh, except it's offensive because it's like, get in the hole. It's actually 1200 a month, so could you give me? Uh, but I, ha I saw a mouse in my apartment the other day. I have a really small apartment. I was like, what are you going to sleep? And, uh, <laughs> and so I go to the store to get a, a glue trap. I got a glue, and I have ethical reservations about that. It's like, that's got to be in the Bible somewhere, you know, glue into others or whatever. Thou, thou shalt not glue alive shit to other shit. Uh, something is in there. But, uh, and so I get it. And even, I feel awful, I put it down. Uh, my worst nightmare, the, the mouse runs out, immediately gets stuck, you know. It's like, ah, ah, no. like, like it's, it's just my nightmare. And, uh, and so I try and save it. You know, I get a mop and I'm like, oh, we're gonna do it, you know, we're gonna. <laughs> but even if that works, it's a bad thing. It's, it's like, you know, for the rest of his life, he's got one leg, he's got glue on his back, you know. It's like an uncle with war scars, you know. It's like uncle glue trap. And, uh, <laughs> And so I have to put it out of its misery, and so I, I put it in the toilet to drown it. And uh, I'm trying to help it. I really, I don't want it to suffer. And so I, uh, what happens is it keeps, it put it in, it keeps rising to the top, like floating, you know? So I'm like pushing it down, it's like rising up, and I'm like pushing it down. And now I'm making it do bobs, you know? It's like, uh, it's like this morbid swimming class at the Y, and uh, <laughs> so I have to weigh it down. So I get a bottle of Clorox and I put it on top, and it weighs it down, and it, and 
I don't know. I'm sorry. I, uh, it happened, you know. I apologize. But uh, and so I, I weigh it down, and then I try, and then we're all done. It's all done. And so I, I take it out, but the Glorox is stuck to it, and so it's like this kind of like modern art combination Clorox bottle mouse blue trap item, and uh, I kind of like stuff it in the garbage can and I throw it outside, and the reason I'm telling the story is because uh, if we ever find Osama Bin Laden, <laughs> I got a great fucking idea. I, uh, traps. <laughs> so I live next to uh, Washington Square Park in uh, New York City. And so every time I walk out my door, someone's trying to sell me drugs. It's like I'm walking down the street to get a Snapple, and someone's like, yo man, you want some heroin? I'm like, no. <laughs> Do you have any Snapple? <laughs> I'm thinking some of these guys should also sell Snapple. That way they hook you in with the Snapple, and then they're like, you know what would go great with that snap? <laughs> A few months ago, I was walking out my door, this guy goes, yo, you want some coke for the Super Bowl? And I was like, no, but I respect a drug dealer with a marketing plan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't smoke a lot of pot anymore. And the reason I don't is because I'm the least fun person to smoke pot with. It's like no one wants to hang out with the guy who ends every sentence with, do you guys hate me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink a lot. My family calls me an old soul, and my friends call me a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> my friends drink anywhere. My friends drink at the laundromat. I try drinking at the laundromat. I was in a submarine. <laughs> Navigating the sea of dirty panties with my Spanish-speaking crew. I was like, Mrs. Sanchez, set the coordinates to permanent press. Rita, the engines are stalling. Get me some quarters. And another drink. This place is starting to look like a laundromat. A lot of sports analogies with drinking, like pregame and party foul. I like to make up my own. The other day I was like, ah, oh, I pulled a hamstring. My friend was like, what does that mean? I was like, oh, I threw up on your couch. <laughs> and I did it again. I was like, 30 love. <laughs> I get annoyed when football players score touchdowns, and then they start dancing afterwards. Seems so self-congratulatory, like, now that I have everyone's attention, here's a few other skills I've been working on. <laughs> I feel like you're going to do that, let's do something interesting, like, Emmett Smith has crossed the goal line and is painting a Fabergé egg. City. I think it's nice. I think that the homeless people should take it down a fucking notch. Uh, I think uh, they just seem too uh, happy and picky. I was walking down the street today, and uh, and this woman was like, "Give you got you got a dollar?" And I was like, "No, but I haven't." I swear, I, I had an apple and a, and a banana. And I go, you can have one of these if you want. And she goes, eh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe I'll stop by an ATM and get you some cash, you know? Like, yeah, I, what else can I do for you? I really need to work on your situation. <laughs> I've been traveling around quite a bit, and I, uh, I was in the Midwest, and I, sometimes you'll be driving around the Midwest, and you'll, they'll, they'll, there's like porn, like on the side of the road, like they'll be like, pull over, porn, you know, like the billboards, and then, but it's also very religious out there, and so the, like the other day I was like, Billy's porn, and then next to it was a sign that said, 
Porn destroys lives. <laughs> and uh, for a split second, I thought that that was like a certain type of like sadistic, freaky porn, you know? Like, <laughs> like I'd go in and be like, do you guys have that porn that destroys lives? <laughs> <laughs> Went to Dunkin' Donuts this week, and the person waiting on me didn't speak any English at all, like no words, and it's like, I'm all for the melting pot theory, but if I lived in Portugal and I worked at Dunkino Donutos, <laughs> Munchkinos, <laughs> Chocolato, Coverato. <laughs> Customers would be like, blah, 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 Donutos. I'd be like, I am on it. <laughs> Since I didn't understand any of the other words you said, here's a few extra Donutos on the Hawuso. <laughs> And uh, France, they kind of make fun of us a lot, like our institutions and our leaders. And then they copy our dumbest phrases. They're like, super cool, you know? <laughs> Very sexy, you know? Like, you'd be a loser in our country. <laughs> I got to go to Cuba to perform for the U.S. troops in uh, Guantanamo Bay and sign autographs for people who've been gone from America so long they didn't realize that I'm not famous. <laughs> the, uh, the military is really intimidating. Like, I wouldn't last in the military because it were much easier than it is, even if they were like, soldier, get down and give me three. And, uh, I'd be like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> This guy's on a power trip. <laughs> I'd be like, you expect me to carry a gun this heavy and run away screaming? <laughs> I learned all my military training from cartoons. Like, I know that if a guy's pointing a gun at me, I should just bend the barrel around and point it at him. It may not kill him, but it'll turn his face black for a while. <laughs> I like to be in the Navy SEALs, but I'm not that good at swimming, so I'd have to do all the shallow water assignments, you know? Like, if there were ever a Marco Polo mission, this guy, this guy, you know? You guys get the bill this year? How'd it go? Mm, maybe. I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> or an apple. <laughs> I, uh, I'm doing this Carson Daly show again on Monday. I've done a, yeah. It's on so late, it's like, how could you possibly, like, whenever I, I watch it, it's always like a healthy reminder that I should be asleep. You know, I'm like, uh, wow, I should go to sleep, like, three hours ago. That's what I should do. It's like the opposite of a wake-up call. It's like an asleep-up call, you know? <laughs> Peter liked that one, you know? <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I go on the show, and I, Carson still doesn't pronounce my name right, which is pathetic. I've been on the show six times. <laughs> You'd think that the guy would take a break from his visa commercials and fucking radio show bullshit and, uh, you know, read, read a cue card. But, uh, no, I like it, but, I, you know, it's absurd because I'm like the least famous person to ever appear on television, you know. People recognize me sometimes. They feel like they should win a prize, you know. They'll be like, they'll be like you're my Birbiglia. Do I get anything, or do I, do I win? It's very sad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 
this is nice. I'm gonna go. Uh, what should I see tomorrow? Anything good? <laughs> see, I I go around to places. You know. <laughs> <laughs> By far the most absurd statement of the show. <laughs> I, got, I actually went to the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., and I saw these panda bears. And one of the reasons they're going extinct is because the male pandas like eating more than they like mating. Which I can understand, because if I were a panda and I had to have sex with another panda, I wouldn't be that excited either. I'd be like, oh great, she looks exactly like me. <laughs> Can I get a bamboo sandwich or something over here? <laughs> One of the ways they're trying to get pandas to mate is they're showing them porn. And I want to know, is there panda porn? Or is it human porn? Or is it humans dressed like panda porn? Which is some kinky panda porn that I might be interested in. If it's human porn and I were a panda bear, I'd be like, yeah, I'll have sex with her, but I'm still not going to have sex with her. And if it's panda porn, how do they get those pandas to have sex with each other in the movie? Let's get that director on board for our project. And that lead stud panda actor, the John Holmes of pandas, he's like, I do all the panda hoes. Black, white, black and white. <laughs> One of the things they try to do, they try to put a panda embryo inside of a cat. As though that cat isn't confused enough about her life already. She's like, I don't know where I am. I've got a urinary tract infection, and I just gave birth to a goddamn bear. Does anybody know what the hell is going on? I feel bad for these pandas because they poop up to 140 times a day. It's got to be hard to have a serious conversation, you know? You're like, Honey, we need to talk. Oh, my God. Go behind a tree or something. I know we're bears, but come on. Oh, there goes me. Sorry, brother. I love going to the zoo. They have zoos in places they shouldn't have zoos. I went to a small town called Erie, Pennsylvania, and they had a zoo. It was just like the guy in town with the most animals. He was like, these are the The hammerhead shark. That's a half a can of tuna fish. No animal. Um, I don't know. I have a hard time waking up in the morning. I think because my dreams are way better than my life. <laughs> my dreams are so effortless, you know. It's like I want to go to the. It's like a movie. It's like I want to go to the store. Cut to the store, you know. <laughs> to walk, you don't have to do anything. I wake up in the morning, I'm like, cut to the store. Oh no, still on my bed. I'm not even wearing shoes. My, I, my defense is against waking up. Like, I'll wake up and then I'll fall asleep and then I'll dream that I'm waking up and getting shit done. <laughs> I'm like going through my list. I'm like, I return those videos. I had lunch. I called my mom. I wake up. I have like a shoe on my face, you know. It's like, and I end up sitting at home watching nature documentaries and uh, a lot. And uh, and uh, I always feel bad for the animals because I feel like I know more shit than they do. I feel like I'm at the bank heist. And I'm the guy in the van watching on the monitor, and they're like, the Arctic fox has only one known predator, the polar bear. And I'm like, Arctic fox, it's a setup, get out of there! <laughs> glue trap the Arctic fox, glue trap the Arctic fox, I repeat, put down the salmon and walk out. Polar bears, because 
they're like so laid back because they don't have any predators. They're like, shit's going great, you know? <laughs> like once in a while, like a wolf comes up and is like, what's up, what's up? And they're just like, look, I'm nine feet tall and uh, unless you stop doing that, I'm gonna rip your body apart like it was a pillow. So, uh, yeah, I'm nine feet tall, so. We're gonna have to stop that. Late? You guys going out after the show? Nope. Yeah, you guys? You guys? Who's going home? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going home with me? No, I don't know. It's weird. Creeping. This guy's creeping. <laughs> I say... <laughs> I say it's the best Western because uh, my career is going great. And uh, <laughs> when I was starting out, I used to just stay at the Western, dude. And uh, <laughs> moving up, baby. I'm in superlatives land. <laughs> Western one day, and it's gonna be fucking great. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. I went to the doctor the other day, and they told me there was something in my bladder. Whenever they tell you that, it's never anything good, you know? Like, we found something in your bladder, and it's season tickets to the Yankees! <laughs> it turned out I had this mild condition with my bladder, it had a real specific name, it was called a not covered by insurance, and uh, <laughs> they say that laughter is the best medicine, but I think that medicine is the best medicine, and <laughs> laughter is like ninth after reflexology and checkers. <laughs> doing a 
a black guy doing a white guy voice, you know? A lot of black comics have the white guy voice, like, this is ridiculous, you know? Like, we all talk like British detectives, and it's like, I don't know anyone who talks like that. I feel bad for the one guy on earth who does talk like that. He's watching those comics on TV, and he's like, this is preposterous. That doesn't sound like me at all. Wait till I get my hands on that black fellow, but first I'm gonna dance. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, I went to my black doctor the other day, and he was like, here's your results, bitch. You know, I'd be like, what? <laughs> That's gonna happen? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I think it's, it's a lot of times slurs are so ludicrous. The other day, this guy was like, what's up, white bread? I was like, white bread? That's not even an insult. That's just my race plus a food. <laughs> like, like, I can do that too, black bean soup. <laughs> you stay out of it, Asian chicken platter. I heard you guys have casinos, is that right? I always thought, I went to one in Wisconsin, I always thought casinos were only in uh, Atlantic City and Las Vegas, and then I realized we stole land from the Indians all over the country. <laughs> Jay-Z, eh? <laughs> the word is Drizza, G-R-I-Z-Z-A. -Z -Z 